our system for regulatory and stakeholder engagement does not work. Let's just start there. Let's just start there. We've got huge gaps. We're destroying productivity. We're destroying environment. And we are destroying innovation. So that's not to say I'm not a huge fan of the Alberta Energy Regulator and their regulatory excellence program. It's not to say the Canadian Environmental Assessment Agency isn't also world class. It's not to say that I'm so proud of Synergy Alberta and everyone in this conference. But, there's always a but. So my background, I'm a negotiator, I'm a collaborator. I'm publishing a book, uh, Breakthrough to Yes, um, Unlocking the Possible within a culture of collaboration. So I've realized in my 40 years in business, in oil and gas, in dispute resolution, what's missing is our cultures of collaboration. We think collaboration is an event. It's not. It's how we relate to each other with respect, kindness, challenge. And I'm challenging Synergy Alberta, I'm challenging each one of you today to take another perspective. Because my experience in the last 12 months has shaken me. So the shaken me part is notwithstanding all the good intentions, the regulatory excellence, all of the work that I've done in my 40-year career to help people negotiate from principles, underlying interest, uh, appropriate dispute resolution. I've been exposed to what this looks like from a landowner perspective, from many landowners' perspectives, and from a mountain removal application in southwest Alberta. So I think we are uh, wasting time. I think we are wasting resources. I think we can do far better. My whole career has not been adversarial. My whole career is about getting together, working together, together better. And uh, our regulatory and stakeholder engagement process supports the adversaries. And I will, part of my discussion this morning, tell you how I had to be the guy that picked up the bigger stick to get the other side to pay attention. That was my experience in Massachusetts in 1986, and it's my experience in the Blairmore area in 2015, and I'm tired of that. What about time? What about cumulative impact? What about the cost of engagement to all parties? We're going to come back to that. Just look at that. Can we say that the way we engage as synergy advocates, evangelists, as the Alberta Energy Regulatory, as the Canadian Environment, Sustainable Resource Development, as Albertans, as Canadians, and as people in the world. You know, Jan mentioned that I'll be speaking in Oxford. The thing in Oxford, it's, well, it's kind of cool. You know, what do you say to people that are three times smarter than me? But they're trying to, they're realizing that no matter how smart they are in Rhodes House, Rhodes Scholars, they don't have the answers. They are looking to build their collaborative culture. Look at these characteristics. Are we maximizing the possibilities? Are we just getting decisions on individual applications? Here's what's lost. Here's what's lost every day, every year, every decade for us as people who believe in a sustainable and shared future. Time, trust, money, and mostly what I'm doing with my book is helping people to come together, to innovate together. Nobody gets to be wrong. And damn it, the challengers, the people that show up and say, Dave, you're wrong, they're the people I want to talk to. We need innovation. We need to come together. 
Just because you get approval doesn't mean you can proceed. Look at Northern Gateway. They got approval. They haven't built an inch of pipe. And from the landowner side, just because you're directly affected doesn't mean the decision will go your way. Where is the common good? Where is the public good? Where is the future that we want to create? Add a little more insult. Where does the money go? So I started equipping the landowners with uh, regulatory legal experts, found some of the best in Canada, and, and they were kind enough to have a few meetings with us at no charge. Uh, and remember when I said I, I asked the coal company for some compensation for the landowners for their time, for their resources, and for the experts they needed to reach out with? I asked for $10,000. Seems like a lot of money. The regulatory lawyer told me that assuming that this goes to a joint review panel with the AER and the Canadian Environmental Assessment Agency, then to, for him to represent those landowners, just one couple, he estimates his bill would be a quarter million dollars. And the coal company would be obliged under our system to pay that. So do you, do you see the systemic problem here? The people that are living across the road still get no recognition. They get a junkyard dog, you know, one of the best regulatory lawyers and firms in Canada, who collects a quarter million dollars and, and way more. That's just on the landowner side. And the landowners are sitting there saying, are we going to have to sell our car? You know, how do we show up here? You know, how do we show up? How do we have our voice? How do we not be minimized? So I, I was part of the process to find the bigger stick, to threaten the coal company, to pay attention and collaborate. Uh, I advised my clients to use the system every way we can. Whenever there was a pinch point, whenever there was a place for a, a rebuttal, a submission, whatever, I said, do it. Even if it's even remotely, I want us to be paid attention to and I want the regulatory agencies and the people to know we're serious about this. We're not going to go away. So we've got many millions of process costs. We've, you know, we still haven't determined, okay, how does, how does a mountain removal project near Blairmore fit in with our vision for the economy, the environment, the indigenous peoples, and our granddaughters? How does that fit? We, nobody's ever having that conversation. Where's the cumulative impact? And those that know you and, and know me, and most of you do, know that I'm an entrepreneur, a capitalist. I love it. So this is not you know, old gray-haired Dave turning green. No, this is the way I live my life. This is, I believe only in sustainability. And I think that in my coaching practice of organizations, the easiest place to get people to move is talk about our shared future. Where's that conversation in this system? You know, as long as you pretend that you're not in a system, it's going to get tougher and tougher to do stuff in North America and the world. So here's an instance where I just ask the question. I go back to innovation. And what are, the th what are three things that you can think of that we might want to look at the bigger picture, the relationship, the economy, the society, the environment? How do we not separate, not get into separate right, wrong, black, white, uh, green versus red, you know, any of that nonsense? So building it from a, a wholeness perspective, not the separate pieces, not, well, this is my intellectual property or my project or, or my land or whatever that is, you know, looking... On my weekly radio show, a friend of mine writ, wrote uh, several songs for me, but uh, one of them I encourage you to go to my website and listen to. It's We Are One. So my collaborative global initiative is recognizing we, 15 years ago we all thought, wow, eight degrees of separation to anybody in the world. You know, Jan is only separated by eight degrees from Vladimir Putin. This is cool. We, we can change our world. 
That's wrong. I believe that at most we're only now separated by two degrees of separation because you know somebody that I need to know. You know somebody who's an expert in mountain removal. You know somebody who's an expert in wolves. You know somebody who's an expert in, in caribou. <laughs> you know somebody that says, uh, you know, yes, our system is broken. I'd love to be there. And it doesn't have to be around a project. It could be a, a whole rethinking. Why would we do that? Who, who are the gatekeepers? Who are the people that will say this matters uh, to move us away from the, the one-offs? Um, that's critical. And I believe, I guess I'm, I believe I'm wrong most of the time. Uh, I believe that when I ask for collaborative leadership and collaborative cultures, there's somebody in the room that's got that kind of a comment that says, where are the drivers? Why would they take the risk? Dave, this sounds like this could be a forever legacy thing that nobody actually can accomplish. And those are all true. What I will say is we spend hundreds of millions of dollars on reviews and approvals and processes that are, I, I will say it again, they are world class. And yet we don't move ahead. And yet when those approvals are done, it's like going to court. Everybody's going to be pissed off. Everybody's going to be mad about something. And I want my granddaughter to be in charge of what I do in my life, in collaborative leadership, and, and encouraging people to say, this really matters. It's, when, are the, uh, when are the premiers and the prime ministers and the presidents going to say, this actually will make a difference? And rather than spending $250,000 to hire a regulatory lawyer at you know five hundred and fifty dollars an hour, we could probably give some landowners twenty five bucks an hour and at least recognize that this isn't having an impact um, so that's where I want to close. I really appreciate your attention. I want it to be way more controversial and prod you. I hope some of you will approach me and approach synergy approach Julia, approach uh, Canadian Environmental Assessment Agency and saying, you know, I, I disagree with some of what you said, I agree with some of what you said, and I'd like to be part of not isolating landowners on specific projects, not dishonoring the grizzly bar bears, not dishonoring, you know, those mountains are worth, they are, they are capital. Once a mountain's gone, you don't reclaim it. How many mountains do we need? We've got lots of mountains. We can sacrifice 1%. Well, let's have those conversations. So I'm challenging us to rethink stakeholder engagement in our regulatory process to say, yes, we are, have the best practices in the world. We have excellence. And the system doesn't work. Thank you.